In April 2001, a quiet suburban neighbourhood in Scottsdale, Arizona was shattered by a heinous crime that shocked the nation. The Fisher family, consisting of Robert Fisher, his wife Mary and their two young children, Brittany who was 12 and Bobby who was 10, were brutally murdered in their own home, seemingly following an arson attack, but not was all as it first appeared. The case soon gained national attention, not only for the horrific nature of the crime, but also because of the mysterious disappearance of the prime suspect, the father, Robert Fisher. Robert William Fisher was born on April 13th, 1961, in Brooklyn, New York. Growing up, he displayed a keen interest in the outdoors and developed a passion for hunting and fishing. As he matured, Fisher's quiet demeanour and meticulous nature became evident, traits that would later come under scrutiny in light of the tragic events that unfolded in April of 2001. His father was a banker named William Fisher, and his mother was Jan Howell. The family included three children, Robert and two daughters. However, when Robert was 15 years old in 1976, his parents decided to part ways. Following the divorce, Robert and his sisters relocated to Arizona, where they resided with their father. They all attended Swaharo High School in Tucson, Arizona. According to accounts from friends and relatives, the divorce was a tumultuous event that had a profound and lasting impact on Robert in particular. A high school friend described him as harbouring deep bitterness about the divorce. On one occasion, he confided in an acquaintance that his life would have taken a different course had Jan not left the family. Fisher met his future wife, Mary, in the early 1980s, and the couple married in 1987. Fisher had joined the United States Navy with aspirations of becoming a member of the SEALs, but his attempts in this regard were unsuccessful. Subsequently, Fisher pursued a career as a firefighter in California. However, his tenure was cut short due to a back injury, leading to an early retirement from the force. Following his retirement as a firefighter, Fisher relocated his family to Arizona and transitioned into the medical field. He held various positions, including working as a surgical catheter technician and later as a respiratory therapist, while Mary stayed at home to care for their children, Brittany and Bobby. Additionally, there was a period in the late 1980s when Fisher worked as a weed sprayer, during this time, a former employer remembered him as a reserved individual who endured significant back pain, but was nonetheless an efficient and reliable employee. The Fisher's Arizona home was spacious and located in a peaceful suburban community, and by 2001, Fisher was employed as a surgical technician at a Mayo Clinic in Scottsdale. Robert Fisher was described as a quote-unquote control freak who had a fractured and awkward relationship with his children. However, he put a lot of effort into creating this perfect image of the Fishers. Mary was an obedient wife who, according to Robert's mother, never stood up for herself or questioned the actions or words of her husband. On the morning of April 10th of 2001, tragedy struck the Fisher family. In the early morning hours, an explosion occurred inside their home on the 2000 block of North 74th Place, followed by a fire that engulfed the entire property. The explosion seemed to originate from the living room and the ensuing fire reduced the house to mere ruins. The initial blast possessed enough force to bring down the front brick wall and jolt the structures of neighbouring houses within a half mile radius in all directions. 
Prior to the arrival of firefighters, neighbours utilised garden hoses in an attempt to contain the flames. Firefighters arrived at the scene at approximately 8.42am and successfully prevented the 20-foot-high blaze from extending to nearby houses. However, they had to maintain a cautious distance due to a series of smaller secondary explosions thought to be the result of either rifle ammunition or paint cans. During this operation, one firefighter sustained minor leg injuries after losing his balance and falling near the fire. Once the flames were extinguished, a grisly discovery was made inside the Fisher home, which shocked everyone to the core. The bodies of Mary Fisher and her two children were found in their bedrooms, each the victim of a vicious attack. Autopsies revealed that Mary had been shot in the back of the head and the two children, 12-year-old Brittany and 10-year-old Bobby, had been bludgeoned and had had their throats slashed from ear to ear, these injuries having occurred hours prior to the fire igniting. Investigators quickly ruled out any possibility of an accidental fire, instead concluding that the fire was intentionally set to cover up the murders. As a result, all eyes turned to Robert Fisher as the prime suspect. However, by the time authorities realised his involvement, Fisher had vanished without a trace. As the search for him began, details about his life started to emerge, providing a glimpse into the mind of a man capable of such unimaginable violence. Friends and acquaintances described Robert Fisher as a devoted family man, a loving husband and father. He was known to be meticulous about his appearance and his hygiene, often seen with well-ironed shirts and neatly trimmed facial hair, something which he had grown accustomed to during his time in the Navy. Yet behind this facade, Fisher held a much darker side. Reports indicated that he had become increasingly distant in the months leading up to the murders. Friends noted his obsession with conspiracy theories and his deep-seated paranoia. Fisher's religious beliefs also played a significant role in his life as he became involved with an extremist religious sect. Fisher had been an active participant in the Scottsdale Baptist Church men's ministry, but he had begun to distance himself from church activities a few months prior to the murders. In 1998, the Fishers sought marital counselling from their church's senior pastor. During these sessions, Fisher confided in his co-workers about a regrettable one-night encounter with a sex worker he had met at a massage parlour. He was troubled by the possibility of his wife discovering that this encounter had led to a urinary tract infection that had left him feeling unwell for several days in December of the millennium. Fisher also confided in a hunting companion, expressing his commitment to rekindle his faith and preserve his marriage. He indicated that he could not bear the thought of living without his family, hinting at the possibility of considering suicide rather than facing a divorce. Psychologists noted that intense fear of loss is not uncommon amongst individuals who have been deeply affected by divorce during their adolescence. In the weeks leading up to her tragic death, Mary Fisher confided in several friends about her intentions to initiate divorce proceedings with her husband. According to a neighbour of the Fisher family, on April 9th, approximately 10 hours prior to the house being engulfed by an explosion, the couple engaged in a loud argument. Robert's prior cruelties came to light from several people who had once known him. One of Fisher's hunting companions told authorities that Robert was ashamed that his son didn't know or have any interest in hunting or fishing, and in order to teach his children how to swim, he threw them both off a boat. 
In another incident, Fisher killed an elk and disturbingly smeared its blood all over his face. On at least one occasion, he surreptitiously approached a family enjoying a picnic and discharged his firearm into the air. Several years before the tragic demise of his wife and two children, Fisher shot a stray pit bull. He asserted that he had done so in defence of his Labrador retriever, which was being attacked by the pit bull. However, law enforcement authorities contended that he had intentionally engineered the situation to have an opportunity to shoot the dog. As the search for Fisher intensified, investigators uncovered evidence that painted a troubling picture of the suspect. Blood found at the crime scene was determined to match his DNA, and forensic experts discovered large sums of money withdrawn from his bank accounts shortly before the murders. It appeared as though Fisher had meticulously planned the crime. With witness statements regarding their prior experiences with Fisher, it became evident that it was likely that Robert never saw divorce as an option and instead decided to take the lives of his wife and children. The gas line leading from the rear of the house's furnace had been deliberately disconnected. Subsequently, the amassed gas was ignited by a candle that Fisher purportedly had lit. He waited for hours, allowing the gas to build up and slowly descend towards the candle's flame. This delayed ignition mechanism, which would have provided him with a significant head start of approximately 10 hours in his successful evasion of law enforcement, Law enforcement formulated a theory suggesting that the murders occurred between 9.30pm and 10.15pm. Notably at 10.43pm, Fisher was captured on an ATM surveillance camera as he withdrew $280 with Mary's Toyota 4Runner visible in the background. The final tangible clue regarding Robert's location emerged on April 20th when authorities discovered his Toyota 4Runner and his dog Blue in Tonto National Forest near the town of Young, approximately 100 miles to the north of Scottsdale. Blue was notably hungry and in an agitated state when found by the authorities. In the prior ATM surveillance footage, Robert had been wearing an Oakland Raiders hat, which was retrieved from inside the vehicle. There was a complex cave network nearby, however, only a single cave was ever searched. Police also never searched the Fort Apache Indian Reservation, which was less than a mile from where the vehicle was found. There were footprints leading to the reservation, however, for reasons unknown, authorities did not search the area any further. A couple witnessed a man resembling Robert Fisher walking along Young Road a few days before the Toyota was discovered, and it was later stated by a family friend that Robert used to go camping in the area where the car was found. Numerous sightings of Robert Fisher were reported across the country, but all leads turned out to be dead ends. On July 19th of 2001, an Arizona Superior Court issued a state arrest warrant in Phoenix, charging Fisher with three counts of first-degree murder and one count of arson. Consequently, Robert Fisher became a fugitive, leading to the issuance of a federal arrest warrant by the United States District Court for the District of Arizona, charging him with unlawful flight to evade prosecution. The FBI identified Fisher as the 475th fugitive to be added to the 10 most wanted list on June 29, 2002. He was later removed from the list in 2021. He was also featured on the Dirty Dozen list of America's Most Wanted, which highlights the show's most notorious fugitives. The FBI offers a reward of up to $100,000 for information leading to the capture of Robert Fisher. 
In February of 2004, a man who bore a striking resemblance to Robert Fisher was apprehended in Vancouver, British Columbia, by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. He shared similar characteristics, such as a gold upper left bicuspid and a scar on his lower back. Subsequently, fingerprints confirmed that the individual was not Robert Fisher. He was detained by Canadian authorities for approximately seven days until a family member correctly identified him. Fisher is considered armed and extremely dangerous and is known to have connections in Florida and New Mexico. There has been speculation that he might have taken his own life or assumed a new identity to start a different life. Fisher is characterised as a solitary individual and is believed to reside alone in an isolated area. He is Caucasian, has brown hair and blue eyes, is of medium build, stands at six feet tall and weighs approximately 190 pounds. He would be 62 years old in 2023. Fisher is physically fit and is a passionate enthusiast of outdoor activities, such as hunting and fishing. A distinctive feature is the noticeable gold crown on his upper left first bicuspid tooth. It's possible he might walk with an exaggerated upright posture with his chest pushed out owing to his lower back injury. Fisher is recognised for his heavy consumption of chewing tobacco. He has connections to both New Mexico and Florida. Additionally, it is believed that Fisher possesses multiple firearms, including a high-powered rifle. He is considered armed and extremely dangerous. Despite the public's interest and the intense effort put forth by law enforcement agencies, Robert Fisher remains at large to this day. His disappearance has baffled investigators for over two decades, leaving many unanswered questions and a trail of grief for the family and friends left behind.